Congratulations, Ange. Uh, 14 edges in your starting lineup, a potentially tricky away tie, but you've come through with a win. You must be very happy. Yeah, I am. Yeah, um, yeah irrespective of who you're playing, Europe away is always uh, is always a challenge. And um, yeah, you saw the atmosphere the crowd create. They get really behind their team and uh, the conditions as well. So there's a whole range of things you need to deal with. Um, obviously, <coughs> made quite a number of changes to the team, including putting the young boys in. But I thought they handled it really, really well. Um, you know, they, we needed to defend, defend it well. We played some good football, you know, created some good chances, maybe could have had a couple more and um, most importantly, you know, um, win a, an away European tie, which I think, um, you know, it's a credit to the lads. You left Mikey Moore on for 490. I mean, what did you make of him tonight? Yeah, that was outstanding. It was, um, yeah, brilliant. I mean, for a 17-year-old to, to play 90-plus minutes in a, you know, in a European away tie, you uh, <clears throat> He just handled it superbly. Um, I kind of knew he would, and I think it'll help his growth uh, as a footballer. Once you get through a, a sort of experience like that, um, you know, I think you, you grow and evolve. And um, yeah, I didn't feel like I needed to take him off. He still looked strong at the end and was still contributing. And we've um, we've had the Busby Babes and the Fergie Fledglings. Those four teenagers, Angie's well, Angels. Oh, no, we go? no, 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 no. You've got to do better than that. No, no chance. Um, yeah, go on. So, you got a question, or is it just yeah? That? No, I mean, you know, you chucked them in. You know, it's, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of teenagers to put in, but I guess you've seen over yeah, the last few weeks yeah. already. Look, I wouldn't say I chucked them in. I mean, it's all kind of you know, with all these things, you got to be really careful. The young players, I certainly am. I, the first thing is that they're part of our first team squad, not because I, you know. I want some young players, it's because they've earned that spot and then it's about how to help them develop and, you know, the moments we need to, to put them in there, the moments we need to hold off um, and, you know, we, we can't discount the fact that, you know, Archie's 18, um, Lucas is 18, I thought Archie was brilliant today, we asked him to play two different positions and it's incredible how he just, you know, um, adjusts and, you know, and, and, and is able to, to, you know, bring his game to wherever we put him, Lucas worked hard, Will was unlucky a couple of moments, you know, we could have got a goal. So, you know, these guys are there because they've earned their spot, but, you know, they're an important part of our development because, you know, whilst we want to kind of be a team that, that, you know, has an impact this year, it's, like I said before, it's important we're developing players along the way so that, you know, whatever sort of period of potential for success or opportunity for success exists, it, it's elongated because of the young players you got through and um, I just think tonight all those boys will come through that and go okay that's that was tough different but we got through it and we won and are these teenagers particularly special or is it the fact that foot, I guess they are but also football, they are. football they're, they're 18, what were you doing at 18 Tom not this. Yeah, um, yeah. No, but my question would be, football seems to have got a bit younger recently. We saw Yamal in, in the Euros. Is, has the game changed a bit or is it oh, these yeah. guys are so good? that they No, can... no, I, I, I still wouldn't. I mean, how many 17-year-olds are playing in the Premier League? You know, it's like, yeah, Yamal's brilliant, but it's not a common thing. It's still pretty rare because you have to take into account not just... You know, their physical maturity at 17 of being able to handle it, their sort of emotional maturity. You've got to be really careful. There is always, um, you know, exceptions to the rule and Yamal's certainly one of them. And I think, like I said, but if you look at the Premier League, how many 17-year-olds are actually contributing and Mikey is already to us shows that, you know, he's got something special. But we just got to be really careful about how we develop that, I think. Because it's it's too easy just to say, oh, he's, you know, he's a great young player, just throw him in there, especially in the Premier League. Because out of all the leagues, probably in Europe, it's the most physically cha challenging. So, you know, young players, the first thing you want to see is uh, can they handle it? And to be fair, Mikey handles it pretty well. Um, and certainly Archie and, and, and Lucas have that. But we're, we've got to be careful with them. But at the same time, I, it's, you know, we, we've brought some really talented young players to the club and part of my pitch to them was that we will develop them and they will play and it's my responsibility to make sure they do that I can't shy away from that because the next 18 or 17 year old we want to sign will point to recent experience so it's important we, we give them the game time they deserve and just on Mikey you said he's outstanding what in particular do you really like about his performance he just he's just his ability to to kind of deal with um, you know pressure and and keep the ball in really 
you know, tight areas and make really good, clean decisions for a young guy. Um, you know, it's not easy today. You know, out there you could see the conditions, you know, almost suit defenders because defenders can fly in with tackles and, you know, got one in the first 30 seconds, I think it was. But, you know, he kept his feet well and, you know, he takes the responsibility of driving inside or taking his man on, you know, makes good decisions with the ball. And um, like I said, he's got so much growth still. But the good thing is, like, he, he wants to learn, he wants to develop. And uh, like I said, I, I couldn't be happier for him, but uh, also, um, yeah, pretty pleased that he's part of our football club. Wow. Hello, Ange. Can I ask you again about Brennan and another goal? And he just keeps going and he keeps finding that precision finish in the bottom just yeah. inside the post. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, not a coincidence, I take it. No, and, and he was, I thought he was unlucky with the one that hit the bar as well. Um, yeah, look, he's he's in a great vein of form. He obviously feels good about himself uh, at the moment, really confident uh, in his... You know, I guess with all attacking players, you know, goals, assists, they they kind of thrive on that stuff. But you know, look, I, I've said before, he's been fantastic for us. I mean, even if you look at his figures from last year, you know, he's moved to a big club and he's still got a decent return of goals and and assists. It, it was always curious to me why people were singling him out because if you compare him to other wingers in the league, his numbers always stacked up. Anyway, now he's probably you know bypassed all of them. But I had no doubt that you know he would be. Um, you know, it would make a massive impact for us. And now he's making, you know, not just an impact, he's, he's changing games for us. And um, again, you know, he's still a young guy, still working hard, wants to learn, so great for us. Okay. Hi, I'm Karol Ipor from uh, Namzadi Sport. Uh, what's your opinion? Uh, uh, some years ago, uh, you met uh, with Ferenc Varos uh, when you uh, work uh, at Celtic. Yeah. Celtic yes, uh, this uh, Ferenc Varos is a stronger team, or <laughs> or, or in the past? Um, hard to say. But I do remember, you know, both with Celtic and today. So I knew today that um, the supporters create a, a fantastic atmosphere here. Um, you can see why Ferenc Varos have such a strong home record, not just domestically, but in Europe. They're hard to beat here because the, you know, the supporters create a great atmosphere. And I remember that from when we played them with Celtic and we had to work hard that day to get a win. I think it was 2-1 as well, if I remember correctly. Might be wrong. Um, but uh, it was a tight game as well. But um, I knew it would be difficult. Similar today, obviously, you know, I played against um, AZ where Pascal was, was, was also coaching there and they similar they try and play sort of a high tempo high energy game which you know which is what we want to do so we knew it was going to be a, a, a difficult challenge but um look i think you know for the rest of this sort of europa campaign here at home they're going to be they're going to be a challenge for any team last two please there with that hello i'm silar Tsubo from rtl um uh, did ferenc Varos surprise somehow your team in the first 20 minute minutes because uh the game wasn't going the way you wanted, I guess, uh, until the, your first goal. Yeah, to a certain extent. Like I said, I, I knew what to expect because obviously the, the supporters create a great energy and the players have energy at the start. But, you know, we always know that, you know, no team is uh, fitter than us and we'll always finish strong. And, um, you know, I felt, you know, they had a couple of chances where we were still you know, in the game, we're still controlling the game, created a couple of opportunities ourselves. And, you know, after that 20 minutes, I knew we would get stronger and stronger. So it uh, didn't surprise me. I, you know, we spoke about it before the game. I think every time you play away in Europe, that first 20 minutes is pretty important because the crowd is excited. The players, ha all the players have energy. You know, it's in inevitable that the, the home team are going to have some period of um, dominance and you have to be strong. And I thought we were strong and, and eventually broke them down and, and got our goal. Final question then, please. Uh, Janusz Kra from 24.2. Uh, my question is about uh, at the second half, Archie Gray and Ben Davis switched positions. Uh, could you tell me some words about, please, what was the reason behind that? Was that some kind of response for uh, how Ferenc Varos played in the first half or something else? No, I just thought, um, like I said, I felt like we were starting to get on top and stronger and um, Archie's just got a great capacity to run. 
And I thought he, putting him at sort of left back, he would then be able to get forward for us more than Ben. And Ben, you know, with with his ability to defend and his left footed, he could get the ball out to the left side. So I just I just wanted to use Archie's energy as much as anything because uh, he did a good job for us first half. But I just felt in the second half we could really sort of put them under more pressure if uh, we had somebody on the left hand side, the same way as the right hand side, who could get forward and get back. And Archie, and I thought he did that really well. I mean, his first run, I think he ran the whole pitch, and um, I thought that helped us sort of balance our attacks on both sides. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <clears throat>